Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfect Nettles, where medicine makes perfect sense. Have you heard of the spores that were sent in the mail? Oops! They were anthrax. Today we'll continue our microbiology and infectious diseases playlist. We will talk about Bacillus anthracis characteristics today. As you know, it's one of the spore-forming bacteria. And when it comes to these spores, oh baby, they are resilient. Pores in the mail, true story, look it up. This could spread anthrax in an entire community. Please watch the videos in this microbiology and infectious disease playlist in order. We're talking about a gram-positive rod. As for the gram-positive cocci, we talked about them before. Now we're focusing on rods. Bacillus anthracis is a gram-positive rod that is spore-forming and aerobic but non-motile. Can bacillus anthracis make spores? Yes, of course. The spores help the bacteria survive in unfavorable conditions. The bacteria is dormant in the spore form, not dividing, not germinating. But later, it can go back and divide like crazy. That's why spores are dangerous. So again, bacillus anthracis, which causes anthrax, is a gram-positive bacillus that is spore-forming, but non-motile. Again, anthrax is not the same as anthracosis. Now take a deep breath because we're switching topics. Let's review some biochemistry. Your body metabolism secretes acids such as pyruvic acid, uric acid, sulfuric acid, phosphoric acid, all kinds of acids. Even the carbon dioxide that you release from your metabolism is an acid. Why? Because carbon dioxide is going to combine with water giving you carbonic acid, which is an acid. When your cell metabolizes, the cell will dump all of that acidity onto the vein. That's why veins are more acidic than arteries, and therefore veins have a lower pH. Similarly, the metabolism happened inside the cell, in the intracellular fluid. Therefore, the inside of the cell is more acidic than the outside. No kidding. If the inside of the cell is more acidic, it will have a lower pH. Yes, indeed. What the flip does that have to do with anthrax? Wait and see. Good things happen to those who wait. Bacillus anthracis, gram-positive bacillus, could be singular, paired, or long serpentine chains, spore-forming, we were talking endospores, but not in clinical specimens, non-motile, non-hemolytic bacteria. The disease is anthrax. Virulence factors of bacillus anthracis include toxins and the capsule. Let's talk about the toxins. We're talking plasmid. Which one? PXO1. This plasmid carries a gene, because plasmid is a piece of nucleic acid. It can carry genes. Of course, that's what DNA does. Ha <laughs> ha. What do genes do? They code for proteins. Ha. <laughs> Via transcription, then translation to make proteins. What kind of proteins are you talking about? I'm talking about three factors. Protective antigen, edema factor, and lethal factor. Protective antigen is very important. It's like the middleman. Let me ask you a question. Last time you wanted to buy some clothes, like a pair of jeans, did you go to the factory or did you go to the store? You went to the store. You could have gone to the factory. Hopefully they can give you a lower price. But you went to the store. Why? Because it's more convenient. It's faster. They can give you a refund. They have a variety of things to choose from, i.e. the store is the middleman between the factory and you. Similarly, medicosis is a middleman between the textbook and you. You could cut the middleman and go straight and read the textbook. How is that working for you? The middleman is not a dirty word and the protective antigen is the middleman, indispensable. Whether you're edema factor, you will need the protective antigen or your lethal factor, you will need the protective antigen. Protective antigen, the middleman, plus edema factor equals edema toxin. Toxin, not antigen. Next, protective antigen, the middleman, plus lethal factor equals lethal toxin. So we have three factors and two toxins resulting from combination of two factors together. As for the capsule, it's polypeptide, not polysaccharide. What kind of polypeptide? Polydeglutamic acid. What kind of plasmid carries the genes? PXO2 carries three genes, cap A, cap B, and guess what? Cap C. 
for the capsule. When you see EF, abbreviation microbiology, it could mean edema factor or it could mean elongation factor. They are not the same, so pay attention. To belabor the point because it's worth belaboring, protective antigen is the middleman. Predictive antigen plus edema factor equals edema toxin. Predictive factor plus lethal factor equals lethal toxin. Please bring a piece of paper and draw this from scratch. And here's a cool mnemonic about bacillus anthracis. We're talking about three genes that give us three proteins or factors that give us two toxins, as you know. We're talking three genes, cap A, cap B, and cap C, that gave us the capsule. We're talking about three routes of infection by which you can get anthrax, and these routes include the inoculation route, the ingestion route, or the inhalation route. What are the three forms of anthrax? Inoculation will give you cutaneous anthrax, ingestion will give you ingestion anthrax, inhalation will give you inhalation anthrax. So there are three types of anthrax that you can develop. And by the way, we treat anthrax by a combo of about three antibiotics, such as Cipro plus Rifampin plus Vanco, or Doxy plus Rifampin plus Vanco, and we have other options too. Now let the fun begin. This part is not easy. It requires you to do without your stupidity for a minute. After that, you can reclaim your stupidity back, just like the proximal convoluted tibial reclaimed its bicarbonate back. Protective antigen truly is indispensable. Structure, it's a protein. No kidding. Weight, 83 kilo Dalton. Function. The protective antigen, which belongs to the bacteria, is going to bind your receptors on your cell surfaces. Could be your brain cell, heart cell, intestine, lungs, muscles, pancreas, or macrophage. After this, your own cells have proteases. The protease will break down the big protein, 83, to smaller protein, 63, and some smaller fragments. Just to break even, just to balance the equation. This 63 kilo Dalton protein is heptameric complex, seven sides like this. It's known as pre-pore because later it will give us a pore, which is a hole in the wall. This complex, which is on your cell surface, has three receptors only. Who can bind these? Edema factor or lethal factor? They have to compete with each other. Only three of these will bind to the receptor. Now we have a complex, which is made of two things, the heptamer plus elongation factor and or lethal factor. This complex by endocytosis has entered your cell. As you know, your intracellular fluid is more acidic because metabolism secretes acids and metabolism happens inside your cell. And therefore, the pre-pore will become poor because of your acidity. Now, we are inside your cell. Guess what's going to happen? The edema toxin now is going to activate adenylate cyclase, which converts ATP into cyclic AMP. Cyclic AMP causes edema. How about the lethal factor? Lethal factor is a zinc metalloprotease. What the flip does that mean? It's a protease, i.e. an enzyme that breaks down protein, that requires zinc, which is a metal, as a cofactor. Oh, that makes sense. This zinc metalloprotease, known as the lethal toxin, will cleave MAP-K, or mitogen-activated protein kinase, which causes cell death by an unknown mechanism, or I should say, not fully understood. Some pearls for the pros. Please notice the similarities. Here is Bacillus anthracis, its edema toxin, and here is Vibria cholera with its toxin. Both of them stimulate adenylate cyclase, which converts ATP to cyclic AMP. The former is going to cause massive edema, anthrax. The latter will cause massive diarrhea, which is edema of your guts. See, medicine makes so much sense once you understand what the flip you're talking about. The moral of the story is cyclic AMP causes edema. We call this secretory diarrhea. Not to be confused with invasive diarrhea, not to be confused with osmotic diarrhea. We're done with these doofuses, now let's talk about the capsule. Polypeptide, not polysaccharide. What kind of polypeptide? Polydeglutamic acid. The plasmid is PXO2. Carries three genes, cap A, cap B, cap C, which code for proteins that make the capsule. 
function. The capsule is Averian's factor. The capsule inhibits phagocytosis, protecting the bacteria from your own cells. It's one of the mechanisms of how bacteria evade the host. Pause and review. And pause and review again. In the next video, we shall talk about anthrax. If you like this video, you will adore my antibiotics course at my website, medicosisperfectsnetis.com. It will teach you about antibacterials, antivirals, antifungals, and antiparasitic medications. Or you can try my surgery high yields course or my emergency medicine high yields course. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my courses. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfect Snellus, where medicine makes perfect sense.